Several months ago, my buddy Destin called me with a very interesting engineering idea. He wanted me to help him design and build a machine that could swing a baseball bat at superhuman speeds. Usually when I design things that I plan to also build myself, I'll make a prototype. Here's a scaled prototype of a project that I made several years ago, and there's a video on my channel about it. It's basically a flip top workbench that allows you to mount two tools in the same workspace. I often like to make scale prototypes because that helps me to wrap my mind around the moving components and get a chance to see that it's gonna behave the way I expect it to behave before I commit all the material to it. But for something like this and with the tight timeline that we had, I didn't wanna build a scale model. So I told Destin to give me a couple of days and I could build a full scale prototype that we could just improve as we go. Next, we spent a little bit of time talking about what the constraints were and we try to keep them as simple as possible. So here's a quick list of the things that we came up with. After that, I jumped into SOLIDWORKS and started laying out a preliminary design. Here in the model, you can see the original prototype design. The basic idea was to have a nice wide base so that it'd be stable. There's all this empty space on the inside, which would allow us to add sand or maybe a concrete if we wanted to weigh it down. We later figured out that that wasn't required. It was actually pretty stable without adding anything to the inside. Here you can see the first motor that I selected. This is a two horsepower single phase motor. You can tell by the little capacitor box there on the side. It turns out we ended up needing a whole lot more power than that, but we'll come back to that in a little bit. Over here you can see the flange bearing on the inside that has corresponding flange bearing on the outside. And that's what was stabilizing this whole platform here. So I'll give you a quick section cut and you can see inside There we go. There's a space offsetting the flange bearings, makes it more stable, and you get a little bit better look at the motor on the inside. Here's the sliding plate, which allows us to tension the belt. And then later on, Destin came up with this idea of adding a wedge in order to uh, put the tension on a belt, and I incorporated that into the design. Here are the bats on top, and we sort of went back and forth about how we wanted to manage this. The first idea was to add an adjustable weight on one side and have a belt on the other side. But after a little bit of discussion, we decided that having two bats basically doubles our chances of hitting the ball. And it also makes it a little bit easier to set up. If you put both bats in and they're the same brand and size, they should balance each other out pretty well. And that turned out to be true. Here are just some handles on the side which would allow us to load and unload it. Here you can see the sliding mechanism which allows us to adjust the angle of the bat. But again, because this is a prototype, it was evolving all the time. So we ended up putting a piece of wood in this corner here and just screwing it into the side. And that ended up being a really good modification as opposed to just having fasteners holding the side and possibly sliding down out of place. There's several more things we need to consider before we start building anything. And the main one is safety. We've got to think about the pitcher who's going to be destined in this case. We've got someone controlling the mechanical batter, myself. We've got the high-speed camera, which is Trent in this case. And all of these people are exposed to possible breaking bats and extremely high velocity balls. This led to us building several barriers, some for the camera, some for the uh, pitcher himself. And in fact, when we got out to the baseball field, we added a few more barriers just to add a little bit more safety. The other thing that we have to consider is what happens when we break a bat? We've all seen major leaguers break baseball bats and they're swinging the bat at 70 to 90 miles an hour. I'm hoping to swing a bat at least double that speed. So it's pretty much guaranteed I'm gonna break a baseball bat. We ended up building in two safety measures. The first one was a vibration sensor. We know that when you break one of the bats, what you end up with is a huge offset load that turns our machine into an industrial shaker. And we definitely don't want that. So the vibration sensor should be triggered when the machine starts wobbling around. And the second was a built-in function for the VFD or the speed controller I was using for the motor. It has an electric brake option. So I set up a relay to be triggered whenever the vibration sensor goes off. It also turns on the electric brake, which should uh, make the motor stop. It turns out the electric brake wasn't as effective as I had hoped. Once the batter was up to speed, the current flowing through the motor was so high that it would actually trip the breaker on the motor and turn off the electric brake. So the braking part ended up being not as effective as I had hoped. In the future, I will use something, I will use a mechanical brake. 
Well, the next thing to do is to build a prototype and start testing this thing. So I got my two horsepower motor loaded up. We put the bats on top and jumped this thing out in the yard for some preliminary testing. Moments like this, safety glasses don't feel like enough. <laughs> Dude, I can hear the helicopter sound from here. My heart is like seriously pounding right now. You can't feel how intense that is, but that's freaking scary, man. And that's only half the speed. Okay, so far there are no signs of anything sliding or coming out. Let's try 50 hertz. That's as fast as I'm gonna be able to go with this pulley set. But as far as I can tell, the motor is not taxed. I think we got more speed left. Second thought, I tripped the breaker. Well, we just missed it, but I can smell the smoke and this dude definitely let out a puff of smoke. So I think I just killed my VFD. Oh man, yeah, you can definitely smell the smoke. It turns out that it wasn't terribly hard, even with the two horsepower motor to get up to about 100 miles an hour. But after that, we started running into significant drag. If you look at the drag formula, you can see that there's this velocity squared and that ended up being a massive problem. In fact, as a rule of thumb, people often say that if you double the speed, you need literally four times the power. And that was true in our experiments as well. At this point, I told Destin, I said, man, we're going to have to switch to a three phase motor. Three phase motors produce a much smoother torque and there are way more options as you get up into the higher horsepower ranges. You typically don't find single phase motors above about 10 or so horsepower. In fact, that's where I decided to start, 10 horsepower. So I went out to an industrial surplus store and found myself an old beat up three phase, 10 horsepower motor and got that thing loaded up in the machine. How, how much horsepower we got here? That's two horsepower right there. Two horsepower, and then you've upgraded us to what? <laughs> <laughs> 10 horsepower. 10 horsepower, but we gotta yeah. get this shaft off, right? Or this collar. Yeah, this dude is rested on there pretty good, but we did get it for like a hundred bucks, so that's pretty awesome. Let's do it. Yeah, All right, good. go for it, buddy. Let's get that thing off. Do it! Now, when your design is evolving like this and everything is still in a prototype stage, this is where you have to be the most careful. We now have a motor that is significantly heavier and literally five times the torque of the original motor. And that led to some additional challenges that we didn't initially expect. For example, some of the early pulleys we used in this project began to deform because they were rated for two horsepower motors and they couldn't quite deliver the power that the 10 horsepower was trying to push through it. And I can smell the faint smell of what smells like burning rubber, but I don't know. And this was a point where me and Destin had to really think through some of the problems and pay attention to what was changing and what was evolving. Since I've been talking about this guy so much, I probably should tell you who he is if you happen to be someone who doesn't know. I met Destin about a year ago and it quickly became apparent that we both love discovering the world around us. We both love engineering and it turns out he's also a family man and that's a huge passion of mine as well. Destin has his own massive YouTube channel and you can check out the link that I'm gonna put up here. There's a strong science and sense of discovery, which is a theme that runs through all of his videos. And this is something that drew me to subscribe to his channel many, many years ago before I ever met him. So I hope you'll check out his videos and I'll put another link to the video we did together at the end of this video. After upgrading to this much heavier, much more industrial motor, this would have been a good time to go ahead and change out that top plate as well that I was using to mount the motor to the body. That was certainly strong enough to just hold the dead weight of the motor, but once you've got this thing under load, if anything happens to the machine, as we found later, then that plate is not gonna be able to handle any kind of uh, jarring of the machine, even if it's brief. But almost every engineering project brings about this challenge. There's always going to be some balance you have to find between the cost of the material, the weight of the material, the strength of the material, and the time it takes to fabricate the thing that you're trying to make. Here you can see the original T-fitting that I selected in order to hold on to this one inch pipe. When you spin it up, the bats were actually really quite well balanced. And so during the prototype stage, 
I just left it there. But later on, Dustin pointed out that this might actually be a safety issue. Which way is it spinning? That way? Yeah, but I can make it spin any direction. I wonder if when we hit a ball, if it'll go cattywampus and it'll come down and it'll hit that right there. It might. I was thinking about that. Really? Yeah. So maybe we can make a ramp or something. We could. Make a ramp. That's the best part about this man. It's a prototype right now. We do whatever we want. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, that's the most fun part of this process, I think, is you just kind of work through the problems as you as you see it functioning. This is nuts, man. Yeah, crazy. I'm pumped, man. <laughs> After that discussion, I ended up taking a solid block and making a custom uh, T holder for our assembly. After trying many different pulley combinations, I was able to get the 10 horsepower motor to get up to about 200 miles an hour. With a little bit of tinkering that I was able to overrun the motor to about 15 horsepower for short periods of time. And that allowed us to get up to about a max speed of 250 miles an hour. Let me tell you, we took this thing out to the baseball field and not only did we crush a lot of baseballs, we crushed a lot of baseball bats and we had a ton of fun. It's hard to explain what's so amazing about these last few projects that we've been working on. I mean, mechanical design is what I do. I love it in my day job. I do it at home in my shop. But there's something about working with a friend on this kind of stuff that just takes it to another level. One legit? Yes. We got to factor in a bounce. There there's, might have been a cow patty over there. <laughs> for the bat. <laughs> if you want to see the results of what we came up with, you can click on this link right here and it'll take you over to Destin's video because you don't want to miss what's coming, not only in this video, but what we got planned in the future. Thanks for watching.